I'm telling you, you got to be able to pick up those ideologies. You got to be able to pick up the philosophy. And here's the next part. You got to be able to defend it. If you can't defend your virtues and if you can't defend your values, I'm telling you, you'll fall prey to philosophies that are not in your best interest. And we've got to help our teenagers. We've got to help our kids, especially to be able to debate the major life issues, the political issues and the social issues and the religious issues and the spiritual issues and the nutritional issues and, and the economic issues and all of the rest of the issues that are valuable for us to build the kind of equities we want. You got to get yourself ready. And one of the ways you got to get ready is not just physical and not just spiritual. You got to get ready mentally. And this is where Shof went to work on me, to be ready mentally, to develop the philosophy and also be able to defend your virtues and your values. Let's go through it. You need a good library. Shof got me started on my library. Here's one of the books he recommended, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Shof said to me, doesn't that book and title intrigue you? Think and grow rich. Don't you have to read that book? Think and grow rich. I said, yes, sir. By Napoleon Hill. I went and found that book in a used bookstore. That's where I had to start. In a used bookstore. I paid less than 50 cents for it. I've still got it. It's one of the rare hardback covers. Think and grow rich by Napoleon Hill. Wow, Shof was right. Get a library started. It'll change your life. Any home over $200,000 has got a library. Why do you suppose that is? Wouldn't that make you curious? How come every home over $200,000 has got a library? Does that tell you something? Does that educate you at all? You say, well, I can't afford a $200,000 home. It doesn't matter what size home. Take your present apartment, clean out a closet, call it your library, and start acting intelligent. And start this process like I did. Start developing a library. Here's what your library needs to show, that you're a serious student of health and life, spirituality, culture, uniqueness, sophistication, economics, prosperity, productivity, sales, management, skills, Values of all kind. Let your library show you're a serious student. Don't be casual in learning. Don't be lazy in learning. Information is the key. Okay. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. Learning is the beginning of prosperity. Learning is the beginning of democracy, the beginning of freedom. All values, all virtues start with the learning process. So don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in gathering the library that will teach you and instruct you. And I got that book, Think and Grow Rich. Some of the ideas in that book inspired me no end, helped me to change my life. Now, it's got some weird stuff in it. You know, it's got some weird stuff. Napoleon was weird. So you got to separate out a little of this weird stuff. But you can do that. You can separate out the weird stuff. Okay. Unless you're weird, just do the weird stuff. Anyway. Remember, don't be a follower, be a student. That's the key to all books. Don't be a follower, be a student. Another book he recommended. Help me become financially independent. We're going to cover that before we finish this afternoon. The book was entitled, The Richest Man in Babylon. The Richest Man in Babylon. By George Clayson, C-L-A-S-O-N. This little book, The Richest Man in Babylon, I use it as a textbook teaching teenagers how to be rich by 40, living in America, 35 if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. I got rich by the time I was 31, didn't wait till 35. If you find a unique opportunity. So we'll get into that after we come back from our next break. Richest Man in Babylon, get your library started. Here are some key sections to put in your library called mental food. In fact, we call it food for thought. It's so important to nourish the mind, not just the body, but nourish the mind. Key phrase. Now it needs to be well balanced. You can't live on mental candy. Somebody says, well, I just read this positive stuff. That's too second grade. 
You've got to get out of second grade. You can't just be inspired. You've got to be taught. You can't just be inspired. You've got to be educated. Here's a good book. It's called How to Read a Book. Good title. How to Read a Book by Mortimer Adler. In this book, How to Read a Book, Mortimer, you know, is the, is the chief editor of the new Encyclopedia Britannica. A good set of books, right, to have in your library. The Encyclopedia Britannica, chief editor, Mortimer Adler. He's, still in, he's in his 80s, still active, still writing books. I've got several of his books, The Six Great Ideas, a lot of books, Mortimer Adler. But he wrote this book, How to Read a Book. Now, in this book, How to Read a Book, not only does he give you some good suggestions on how to get the most out of a book, it's one thing to read it, it's another thing to get the best out of it. He'll give you some techniques on how to get the best out of a book. It's very good. But here's what's also in his book, How to Read a Book, a list of what he calls the best writings ever written. The best writings ever written. I've used it as a centerpiece for my library. So I'm just asking you, take a look. If it suits you, fine. If it doesn't suit you, hey, keep looking until you find something to suit you. But well-balanced. Let me give you some of that balance. Number one, history. We've all got to have a sense of history. American history, national history, international history, family history, political history. We all need a sense of history. Shortest history lesson. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. No matter how far back you go, a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, three thousand, four thousand years ago, I'm telling you, it all reads the same. Once you understand the thread that it isn't going to change, then what's going to change for my life? Answer, looks like I'm going to have to change. History helps us to understand how it is, what there is to work with, seed, soil, sunshine, rain, and what human beings have done with it in the past, and how many of them have, like I did by age 25, they have messed up. That's what history is for. Be a good student of history. Here's a good book, Lessons of History by Durant. Lessons of History by Durant. This little book is only 100 pages, but I'm telling you, it's so well written, you'll be intrigued, as I was. This little book, Lessons of History by Durant. 